Hey everyone, it's Julie. Today we'll be making red velvet cupcakes with a delicious cheesy cream cheese frosting. These are my favorite cupcakes and I hope you guys enjoy them as much as I do. So let's get started. If you're one of those people who think red velvet cupcakes are overrated, shame on you. Now in table, we're going to crack two eggs and pour in all of our wet ingredients, which include vegetable oil, buttermilk, that yolk did an amazing front flip, a little bit of vanilla extract, some red food coloring, try to get the flavorless kind. Some of them have flavor and you don't want that. Mix everything together. And I was going to look a little pink, that's fine. It won't turn red until you add the cocoa powder. I've heard of pink velvet cupcakes, but I've never made them. But I'm assuming that it's just red velvet cupcakes without the cocoa powder. Go ahead and add your sugar and just keep whisking. I like to sift the flour so the batter isn't lumpy and then I'm forced to overmix. And you never want to overmix cake batter, it'll just taste like bread. Now if you refuse to sift, at least sift the cocoa powder, that is the most important. Cocoa powder is super lumpy. Okay, so I sifted the flour, cocoa powder, and salt. I then added the dry team to the red wet team. We're going to stop mixing the minute all of the flour turns red. That's it, it should take about 15 seconds to do so. Here I have some baking soda. To it, I added a little bit of apple cider vinegar that's going to foam up. We're going to add it to our batter and fold it in. This is going to make the red color really pop out and it's going to give it a nice taste. Now I do think this red color is perfect, but if you want it even more red, you can add a little less cocoa powder. I've heard some people say that their red velvet cakes always come out too dark. That's because you're adding too much cocoa powder. Now we're going to take our ice cream scoop or a ladle or a measuring cup, whatever you have, and fill our cupcake liners three quarters of the way. We're going to bake these in a preheated oven at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes. Do not overbake them, they will dry out. While those are baking or cooling, we're going to get started on our cream cheese frosting. In my standing mixer, I threw in some cream cheese and some unsalted butter. We're going to cream those together for about three minutes before adding our powdered sugar. That's going to prevent the frosting from being lumpy. Another way to prevent your frosting from being lumpy is to sift your powdered sugar. I didn't add vanilla extract because I wanted to really taste the cream cheese. And I feel like sometimes the vanilla extract takes some of the cheesiness away. If you don't want your frosting to be too cheesy, just add less cream cheese cheese. Make sure to scrape down the sides and bottom of your bowl and then we're ready to frost those little red guys up. Very important, make sure these cupcakes are completely cooled. If not, your frosting will melt because it has butter. I always start from the center and then I go around like that and I'm using an 807 tip. You may use a star tip, whichever tip you like or have. These red velvet cupcakes were so moist and delicious. I highly recommend you guys giving this a try. Look how great they look. They were so good. I also made a red velvet cheesecake a while back. You guys should totally check that out if you haven't already. I wanted to show you the inside since you guys have been requesting to see the texture of the food up close. You guys are true foodies and I love it. I've experimented with tons of different red velvet recipes this is the keeper. I hope you guys make this and show me pictures of your red velvet cupcakes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you all so much for watching.